So this is a heat transfer question where we have a quantity of iced tea and it's initially at 80 degrees Celsius and we add ice at zero to bring its temperature down to 10 degrees. And we need to know how much ice do we add to achieve that. So basically it's a... Um, heat transfer question. So we need to um, be really disciplined about all the uh, material that we write down. So let's, let's write down all the information we know about the T. So the T, we know that mass is 1.8 kilograms, and it's initially at 80 degrees, and it ends up at 10 degrees, so the mass is 1.8. The initial temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, and therefore the change in temperature, which is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, is negative 70 degrees Celsius. Now, to this um, T, we are adding a huge chunk of ice. And we need to write down what we know about this ice. Now, we don't know the mass of the ice. We know its initial temperature is zero, so it's frozen ice at its melting point. We know the final temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. So after melting, the change in temperature will be um, 10 take away 0 equals 10 degrees Celsius. And we also know the latent heat of fusion for um, the ice, and we know the uh, specific heat capacity of water, which we will use for the ice after it's melted and we can also use for the tea because the tea is basically just water. So the most important expression we need here is the first, the first one. We need to decide which of these materials loses heat and which gains heat. So obviously the, the tea is hot so it will lose heat so we can say the heat lost by the T is equal to the heat gained by the ice. Now, because one is lost and one is gained, we need a minus sign. So we can put the minus sign on this side or on that side, it doesn't matter. But we need a minus sign on one side because we've got uh, heat gain and heat loss. Now, the heat lost by the T, there's a simple equation for that, a simple formula. It's the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature. That's our minus sign. So that's the mass of the T, specific heat capacity of the water, and delta T for the T. So these are all, I should put little subscript T to show that these are all for the T. Now the heat gained by the ice, now remember the ice needs to melt and then warm up to 10 degrees Celsius. So there's two stages. While it's melting, the heat gained is simply the mass of the ice obviously, multiplied by the latent heat of fusion of the ice. But after it's melted, it's then going to warm up, um, and the, the uh, heat involved is mc delta t, and obviously it's delta t for the ice, or I should really say for the water, because the ice is no longer it's now
converted to water. So the ice will go through two phases of um, heat gain. First is to melt from solid ice at zero. I can write this out if you like. Um, so it's ice at zero degrees Celsius to water at zero degrees Celsius. And that requires this much energy. But then it'll go from water at um, zero to water at 10 degrees Celsius. And that will require this much energy. So the total energy required will be the sum of these two because we have a phase change and then a uh, increase in temperature and with a constant phase. So of all these, the only, ex the only quantity we don't know is the mass of the ice. So I can rearrange all this and maybe take mi as a common factor. Let me do that in yellow. So minus m t c w delta t t equals m i into latent heat plus c w delta t w. So I've just taken m i as a common factor. And because this is what I want to find, I can divide both sides by that. So that will give me that there. So that's my expression for um, the mass of the ice. So now I can simply just plug that in and calculate the answer. So the mass of the ice is equal to minus the mass of the T was 1.8 kilograms times specific heat capacity of water, 4186. Times the change in temperature of the T was minus 70. Divided by latent heat of fusion for the ice, again, that's given as 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power 5. Plus CW again, that's 4186. Times change in temperature of the water, which is 10 degrees. That's delta T of water. So we can simply put all that into a calculator and it will give us the mass of the ice involved. So the answer is 1 0.41 kilograms. So that's a lot of ice. That's almost as much as the iced tea. But there you go. That, that's your final answer. 1.41 kilograms.